I'd say a second or less than a second really. Performance is very good. You can see it's one to one literally. There you go. That's what it's like when it's flashing away. Brightness levels are very good. Hi guys, they'll be reviewing an outdoor security camera. So this particular one's from IMOU. It's the Bullet 2E. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So I'll unbox it, show what you get in the packaging. We'll set up the camera with the app. I'll show you all the options you have available in there and we'll test out the camera and its performance. So let's have a brief look at the features they highlight on the packaging. Video compression with this is H265, so a really high level of compression. Picture quality is 1080p and it has a two megapixel camera. It's a weatherproof casing, so you can put it outdoors. Smart full color night vision, Wi-Fi connectivity, you've got a built-in spotlight, cloud service, soft AP mode, and a micro SD card slot, and it supports cards up to 256 gig. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. You get a user guide all in English, document containing legal and regulatory information, which is multi-language. You get a template to assist with mounting the camera. You get a waterproof connector for the ethernet connector on the camera. You get a set of three raw plugs and three screws. You get a power adapter. Output on this is 12 volts, one amp. Cable length is 290 centimeters. You've got a DC connection point and cable quality seems fine. And finally, coming onto the camera. Size wise, it's nice and compact and dimensions wise, seven and a half centimeters there and then seven and a half centimeters over here. And the width is seven centimeters and the height is seven and a half centimeters. So it has a quite compact feel to it. Cable length on the end, we're saying around 33 centimeters up to the longest point there. You got two connection points. There's a DC connection point for the power. And if you wanted to wire it, you've got the option here. This is not power over ethernet, just an ethernet connection. It's adjustable, so it can be adjusted here. Once you get it into position, just tighten the screw there. You've got a slot to put the wire through to keep it nice and tidy and some foam on this area. Mounting wise, obviously you can go this way or drill directly into a soffit and put all the wires through, but keep in mind, you're gonna have to do a big hole to get this chunky connector through for ethernet. Looking at the camera, you've got a matte white finish all the way around and then coming on the front, it's glossy black lenses here obviously and the two floodlights either side you've got two holes on the front so one down there and one up there that's probably the microphone underneath you've got your slot where you put your micro sd card you've got a reset button here as well not sure why that's on the outside really i would have preferred it to be under the cover here but not the end of the world so first impressions looks nice and compact and build quality feels good so let's get this camera set up. So I'm at my Android phone. If I go to the Play Store, this is the app you're after. So IMOU Life. I've already got it installed. Standard stuff. You get it installed, register an account, and then let me start it up now. And there you go. That's what you're initially presented with. So let's click the plus and we'll go for scan QR code. So I'll give it permissions to take pictures and record video. QR code's just under here. And we need to power up the device. So just plugging in the DC connector into the cable here. Then we have to confirm the LED on the camera's flashing green slowly. There you go, it's flashing. So next to this connected device. So it's created a hotspot on the device here. So we'll allow it to connect. We can now pick the Wi-Fi network we want it to connect to. Highlights only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi supported. And if you did encounter any problems connecting it to your router, then what you do, you turn off your 5G Wi-Fi connection, add the camera in and then enable 5G afterwards. So let me enter in my password off camera, click next. And there you go, add it in as simple as that. So we can name the camera. I'll call it garden camera, done to that. Now you've got an option to go for free cloud storage. You can try a trial out for that. So as I've mentioned before, two options, you can go for cloud or you can put your own micro SD card in there so you don't have to pay a monthly subscription. So we'll go for maybe later. And that's it, as simple as that to get up and running with this. So let me briefly show the options you get on here, clicking the red up arrow there gives you the firmware details and you can update if there's an update available and there is a newer version so let me get that on straight away upgrades completed let's go back and that icon's gone away now you can see in the corner let's add in a micro sd card so let me open up the screws at the back card goes around this way simple as that you can see the reset point just over here i guess if you wanted to you could chop off the button just take um, some cutters and just chop that off and it won't be visible at the other end. So if you were concerned about someone resetting it, you can stop that from happening easily. 
Now I've installed the micro SD card and you can see a small card indicator with a green tick next to it and coming in there shows you the capacity available and you can see the cloud icon doesn't have any sort of tick meaning you're not using that. Now clicking on the two dots now message settings notifications are on and push notification thumbnails is on device offline so if the device does go offline you can be notified all videos and this shows any recordings that have been made and currently it's on the cloud one if i click on that you can see the micro sd card recordings that have been made looking on the cloud click buy to cloud storage and selecting start now that's the pricing for this so this is three days and then you've got seven days and then 30 days then if we go to share device so you can share this with other people and then we've got device details you can rename the camera from here and even do firmware updates coming down you've got some of the options we've already seen and then going below that alarm settings and so notifications if you click on that we've seen that one already detection some motion detection so if you had general motion detected it will inform you and you've got a separate one for human detection so if it detects a person then it will inform you so this is good you can turn off the general one if you didn't want to be notified by anything else other than a person going by and then you've got detection schedule you can amend this quite easily just to detect during certain periods looking in here that's where you set up your different periods then you've got motion sensitivity it's in the center at the moment general activity zone so you can pick activity zones you want to be informed about so okay to this so at the moment it's set to everything i can invert that and just pick an area only if it's this location i'll be informed let's get out of that exit to that back again ai detection it says deactivated so it's saying be notified only when humans animals or vehicles are detected so that's coming soon so you've got the ai to pick up humans but there'll be additional functionality coming later on where it'll pick up animals and even vehicles cloud storage you've seen that local storage you can see how much storage i'm currently using which is hardly anything local storage rule so set up the recording schedule and video resolution so it's selected so store video selected and that ensures footage is stored on the micro sd card that's installed on the device video quality it's set to high definition if i select that you can change that to standard definition back from there scheduled recording so if i turn that on you can set a schedule up to record during only certain periods back from here turn that off back again then you've got spotlight activate spotlight detection so if motion's detected the spotlights will be activated then you've got night vision at the moment it's set to smart night vision so coming in here you've got four different modes on here so with smart night vision when it's dark infrared will kick in but if motion's detected the spotlights will come on and you'll see the video in color then you've got bright color night vision and what that does it turns the spotlights on in the night time so the picture you're seeing is in color and then you've got infrared night vision so that's just pure black and white images and then you've got spotlights off color night vision so it will try using the lighting around you to give color images in the dark but obviously that's going to depend on the ambient light around let's put it back to smart night vision i'll show all the different ones later on back from there dust to dawn sensor now this is an interesting one i've not seen this option on other cameras and this is due with the amount of ambient light there is and at what point the infrared will kick in or even the lights will kick in back from here back again audio recording so you can turn that off so you didn't want that recorded you can disable that share device it's not shared with anyone wlan you can see the wi-fi network is connected to and clicking on more you can turn off the status led at the front you can change the image rotation so if you place the camera at a slightly different angle you can flip that you got tls encryption so by turning this on audio and video data on the device will be transmitted through encrypted channels they say but as a warning they say it might affect the performance of the device so let's leave it as is for now time zone date format and restart device now coming back from there then you've got delete and that's all the options you have available back from here clicking on the play there you go that's the camera and if I click here, you've got the share option, settings in there we've already seen. And you can pause the stream, play the stream. Clicking here, you can see multiple cameras. So if you have more of these, you can see them in the smaller windows. Resolution is HD now. Let's come back onto that. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. You've got a speaker icon. Clicking that. Test one, two, three. You can hear what's going on. Full screen option. And you have similar options down below. 
that's come out of this one. And then you've got snapshot, record, and both of these options store the footage locally on your phone. Spotlight, so you can turn that on yourself. Flashing away, you can see for yourself. And that's it, that's all the options you have available on this. Let's test out lag time of the camera. So if I turn it, I'd say a second or less than a second really. Performance is very good. You can see it's one to one literally. So it's standard definition at the moment. Let's take it up to HD, about a second. So with standard definition, obviously there's less data going across and that's gonna be faster. Now, if we test out on data, I'll turn off my Wi-Fi. And now if we go back to standard definition, that's good. So about a second, let's go over to high definition. About a second as well. So there you go, you've seen for yourself, performance is good. Cloud-based connectivity, so you don't have to open any ports on your router. Let's test out the performance of motion detection. So if I put my hand out, about five seconds, and that's with me on my Wi-Fi, it even says human detected, and now coming in there. So it's quite clever how it's picked up human activity from my hand going out, coming out of this. If I turn off my Wi-Fi, it's connected to my 4G data now. And if I put my hand out, five seconds again, human detected again, and performance is very good. You can see for yourself, the floodlights coming on as an additional deterrent. Let me show the floodlights on here. See so if I turn them on. There you go. That's what it's like when it's flashing away. Brightness levels are very good and it's a warm white color on here. Next, we'll give you an idea of the sound quality of spec from the microphone pickup on here. So I'm about seven meters away from the camera and as I'm coming in closer, you can hear the quality for yourself quite low down. And there you go, I'm about a half a meter to a meter away now. And going back again, it is pretty good. Let's test out the daytime quality. So the distance to the end of the garden is 60 feet. And I'll have this sign to give an idea of the picture clarity on there. Now, looking at the daytime footage, you can see for yourself, clarity levels are good on here and all the way around there's no sort of blurriness or anything even the field of vision seems pretty good you can see quite a lot and the letters on the geek street sign you can see for yourself going backwards clarity is good as well moving on to the smart night vision and you can see for yourself no ghosting on this picture quality even at the distance looks good i've got the same sign in my hand and that's not visible until the lights come on. You can see the spotlights come on on there. And going back, there you go, you can see it. Obviously, the brightness levels are quite high close up. Now onto bright color night vision. This is where the lights are on constantly. You can see for yourself, clarity wise, it's good. Coming in a bit closer, it gets a bit washed out just because of the lights again. But going back, you can see the sign clearly. Obviously, the person standing there is clear. Infrared night vision. Again, clarity levels are good on here. No ghosting. And coming in close. Again, the writing on the sign isn't visible. But quality is good. You can see for yourself. Now, this is spotlights off colored night vision. And it does say colored night vision, but... It wasn't color, you can see for yourself, but still clarity levels are good on here. I guess it's trying to pick up any sort of ambient light on there. It was quite low anyway in that evening. Writing's not visible on that, but picture quality is good. So in summary, a really good outdoor security camera with lots of functionality. Positives wise, daytime and nighttime footage in the different modes is really good from the two megapixel camera. It's got a built-in floodlight and microphone. Simple installation via the AP mode. Lag time on here is minimal, so footage you watch on your phone is literally real time. And it also has AI built in to detect humans. 
which can reduce the false alerts you could potentially get from the system and a future enhancement will allow this to detect animals and vehicles too. The camera also has an ethernet connection point so you can have it wired directly to your router if you prefer to do that. Negatives wise it doesn't work with either the Google Home or Amazon voice control product which isn't a great loss as I found it's generally never that good anyway. There's no masking option so you can't mask out an area of the screen if for instance your camera covered some of your neighbor's home and there's no two-way audio or siren and the device only supports 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi so there you go i hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this details are in the description below including purchasing links hang around for the end cards there'll be a playlist with more security cameras and i hope you can drop a like on this video as it really does help the channel out thanks for viewing and see you in the next one